Today we're going to make a leather camera strap with quick release links, a detachable wet formed lens cap attachment, and a concealed lens cloth pull tab sleeve. Let's get to it. I started this project by picking up a leather strap from District Leather Supply. I wanted this strap to be really strong, so I went with an 8 to 10 ounce thick leather strap made by Wicked and Craig. Because I use tripods a lot and find the camera strap gets in the way, I wanted to incorporate some quick release links so I can quickly remove and attach the strap to the camera. I'm a big fan of Peak Design's anchor links because they are really strong and equally easy to use. Now they come on most of their products, but you can also buy just a set of the links which is perfect if you're making your own strap like we are today. The strap I received was 1.5 inches wide, but I wanted it to be a little thinner, so I decided to cut it down to 1 inch wide. Now you could easily do this with a straight edge and a rotary cutter or an X-Acto, but I have this strap cutting tool that makes it super easy and precise. You simply set the strap cutter to the width you want, feed the strap through the slot, and then keep pulling it through until the whole strap is cut. The length of the strap is completely up to you, but I found that I wanted it to be 38 inches long from end to end. Each end is going to overlap itself to attach it to the quick release links, so to account for the overlap I added 2 inches to either end, making the total length of the strap 42 inches long. With the leather attaches to the quick release links and doubles back on itself, the thick leather can get kind of tough to manipulate. So to fix this, I decided to thin that section out by skiving it. To do so, I used Weaver Leather's French Edger tool. As you can tell from the video, this was actually my first time ever using the tool. The tool worked really well, but you definitely have to get the feel for skiving, but I was able to make it work. As you can see, the thinned out leather definitely makes the bend much easier and cleaner. The connection slot on the quick release links was only 3 quarters of an inch, so I needed to cut a little off each side at both ends for it to be able to slide through. I marked in from each edge with my scratch awl, and then used my hole punch to punch holes where the cut will start. I punch the holes because this helps prevent the leather from splitting down the road where the two cuts meet. Next, I did a quick test fit to make sure everything would work. Before attaching the quick release links, I decided to do the edge finishing. I started by using my edge beveler to add a bevel to the top and bottom edges of the strap. There's something really satisfying to edge beveling when you have a really sharp tool. Next, I moved on to cleaning up the flesh, unfinished side of the leather. Now this strap is actually pretty good as is, but sometimes the unfinished side can be really pulpy, and this is a great way to smooth it out. I start by spreading some tokenol leather finish on the unfinished leather. Then I use a glass slicker to really work it into the leather and smooth everything out. Next, I moved on to finishing the strap edges. I again used tokenol, but this time I used their brown version. I use this instead of edge paint or finish because I find it adds just enough color to the edge and saves me a few steps, but it's all personal preference. I start by carefully spreading a small amount along the edge with a die roller. Then I use my edge burnisher to work it in and burnish the edge at the same time. Once that dries, I come back with a piece of canvas and some of the clear tokenol. I again spread a small amount on the edge with my finger, and then use the canvas to polish the edge. Before finally connecting the quick release links, I decided to add my logo to the strap for a little branding. To do this, I used my leather stamp and a one-ton arbor press to deboss my logo into the leather, and man does that Wicked and Craig leather deboss well. Okay, let's finally connect these quick release links. I started by using my scratch alt to mark off where to apply the adhesive. Then I used some Tandy Leathers EcoWeld adhesive to attach the strap to itself. EcoWeld is super easy to use. You simply apply some to both surfaces, wait for them to get tacky, and then stick them together. Next, I use my wing dividers to score stitch lines along each side where the leather is overlapped. 
Then I used my pricking irons to punch the stitching holes. My eight prong pricking iron was actually the perfect length to do one punch on each side. That wasn't planned, but I'll take it. With all the stitching holes punched, I moved on to the stitching. I made a video dedicated to leather stitching where I go in depth into the process of how to do the saddle stitch and others, and I'll leave the link above in case you want to check it out. But at a high level, what I found is easiest is to just pick a sequence and stick to that. For example, I always start by using the right needle to stitch from the back and then stitch the left needle from the front into the same hole but in front and under the right needle's thread. If you continue this sequence, you'll get a very nice looking stitch pattern in my experience. With that, the camera strap was done and ready to attach to the camera. Now you could absolutely stop here and have a completely functional leather camera strap, but I wanted to add a few optional accessories to make it even more useful. I'm always misplacing my lens cap, so the first accessory I wanted to add was a detachable wet formed lens cap holder. By wet forming the case, I won't need to add anything to keep the lens cap in because the fit will be just tight enough to keep it secure. For shallow forming like this, I found this foam process to be the easiest and most effective. You start by soaking the leather in room temperature water for 15 minutes or so. While that's soaking, I added some tape to two pieces of wood and grabbed a 1.5 inch thick piece of foam that will sandwich between two pieces of wood with the leather and lens cap. Once the leather is completely saturated, I pat it dry, then sandwich it on top of the lens cap between the wood and the foam and apply some clamps. The foam forces the leather down over the lens cap while the leather dries, and if everything works well, the leather will dry holding the shape of the lens cap. And as you can see, it worked really well. It even almost shows the Fuji logo. Next, I moved on to cutting out the back piece of leather. I again used my scratch awl to mark out the top contour of the lens cap onto the back piece of leather and then cut it out with my X-Acto. To allow me to detach the lens cap holder from the strap, I added some snaps onto the back of it before gluing the front and back together. Being able to detach it allows me to make lens cap cases for various lenses and still use the same strap. Next, I can use some EcoWeld to glue the pieces together. Then I used my X-Acto to cut off the excess leather around the edge. To add more strength, I decided to add some stitching around the edge and again started by using my wing divider to score a stitch line. Then I used my pricking irons to punch the stitching holes. To ensure the spacing between each hole stays consistent as I work my way down the line, I always make sure to place the stitching chisel point furthest to the left in the last hole of the previous set of holes I punched. Then I again used the saddle stitch I explained earlier to stitch everything together. As I mentioned at the beginning, the wet forming creates just enough grip to hold the lens cap in the case while still being able to quickly remove it when needed. With the lens cap holder done, I moved on to the concealed lens cloth pull tab sleeve. I started by cutting a microfiber cloth down to my desired size. I wanted to make the pull tab sleeve the same 1 inch width as the strap, which didn't end up being wide enough, and I made a 1.5 inch wider one later off camera, but the steps are the same. I started by cutting the front and back pieces, then I used a snap to measure how wide to make the pull tab the lens cloth would be attached to. Then I attached the lens cloth to one end with some stitching. To see how long the sleeve should be, I just used the pull tab and lens cloth as a reference. Just like the lens cap holder, I wanted to be able to detach the sleeve if I wanted to, so I added two snaps to the back piece again. For the snaps, I used a snap setting kit from Tandy Leather and just followed the instructions. To secure the pull tab closed, I also added a snap to the bottom of the front piece. Next, I used some EcoWeld on each side to attach the front and back pieces. Then once again I scored a stitch line, pricked some stitching holes down each side, and then used the saddle stitch again to stitch everything together. Once the sleeve was assembled, I could push the pull tab through it, and then measure where to add the snap on the pull tab. With the two accessories complete, the only thing left was to add some snap to the strap itself. 
I simply pushed the sleeve snap side down on the strap where I wanted to mount it to the strap, which left indentations I used as a guide to add the snaps to the strap. Then I repeated the same process on the other side of the strap with the lens cap holder. And with that, the strap was done. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram and would love to have you follow me there as well. I also just launched a Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee for anyone that's interested in supporting my channel and helping me to keep learning and sharing these projects and videos. I've left links to both of those in the description if you're interested and able to support my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.